G'day yeah, everyone, um, the strings on the guitar are getting a bit ragged, they uh, are hurting my fingers so uh, it's time for a restring and I also thought that I'd just make a video for you guys. For people that um, haven't had so much experience or maybe they get the shop to, to do it for them, you know, you pay your money and it's actually pretty cheap. Usually it's 25 to 30 bucks to get a restring at a shop and they whack the new strings on and it's you know it's pretty easy but there's also something really nice about working on your own guitar and restringing is something that you need to learn how to do yourself um, having to drive your guitar down to the shop can be a real pain when you can just change the strings on your own and if you just do a quick string change it's really really quick or you can do what I do which is clean the entire guitar um, clean the fretboard and then polish up the frets a little bit each time um, and taking care of your guitar means that it's nicer to play and you're going to want to play it. Um, the amount of times I've picked up a guitar um, at a friend's place or um, at a shop and then instantly not want to play because the sh strings are rat shit and the fretboard's full of gunk from their fingers, it's nah, not very nice. So. This is a video on that, I'm by no means an expert or guitar tech, um, but I really enjoy doing this stuff. So these are the things that I use. First thing you want is a tuner. Um, if you haven't got um, a proper tuner, either get um, a headstock tuner or one of these, okay? This is a um, this is a cork pitch black and that sits on my pedal board. Um, and this is really important towards the end when you're tuning up the strings, okay? So you want one of them. Um, this isn't really necessary, but it does make it a little bit easier. It's a string winder. You just put it on the peg and wind it around. You're going to need some strings. I use these um, power slinkies, and they're 11 to 48. Um, I wouldn't recommend tuning to standard with these. They're a little bit tight, but you can. Um, they're good for half a step down, full step down, and drop D and stuff like that. And on the snake bite, I have um, it tuned to drop C, and it works pretty well. And this one usually sits a half a step down, so... Um, if you've got multiple guitars, I recommend tuning them with different tunings, just so there's something different, um, and it also means that you're not tuning the, tuning the guitar up and down all the time, which is a pain, and it puts stress on the strings. Um, some lemon oil. I use this for polishing the guitar and the fretboard. Get some mo moisture in there. Don't put water on your fretboard. Um, use lemon oil. It's great stuff, and this has lasted me years, this little bottle. It was probably like you know, 12 or 13 dollars and I've done probably you know, a couple of dozen restrings on with this little bottle. Um, paper towel for wiping and stuff like that. Um, Screwdriver is always handy to have if you want to just pick up height and stuff like that. Um, pliers, the ends of the strings can be very sharp so if you don't want to put your little baby fingers like mine or your little soft girl hands. Um, you can use the pliers and they're also really good for getting really good pressure um, and your wraps and stuff like that and then maybe a more heavy duty pair for um, cutting the strings themselves. Uh, what else have I got? I've got a little little cloth here and here's another thing. These things here. So what you do with these is you put them over the frets. So I'll just put it under the string. You slip it over the frets. So that one doesn't fit. Of that you put it over the fret and then you get some steel wool like this not the ones that you clean your dishes with not the stainless steel stuff but this steel wool you just use to polish the top of the fret okay some people use like a really high um, high grade of wet and dry sandpaper that's good for polishing um, but this stuff's pretty good and I just asked my local guitar shop if I could have a little bit of it because um, I didn't know where to buy it at the time and these bought these at guitar shop and there was like a set for the entire fretboard but really you only need one so maybe you can get together with um, a friend or two and just put in the put in five bucks each and then walk out with a handful of these and these are great so that's everything I'm pretty sure um, another thing that you want to do is you want to have a nice clear workspace um, I've just got a little table here with a folded up towel to sit the guitar on um, and I also something to raise the headstock up. I've just got some bundled pyjama pants here, um, which I don't mind getting dirty. So the thing that you want to do is you want to loosen off the, um, the tension in the strings. Um, I tend to loosen them off and then 
and then cut them off. But you don't have to do that. Sometimes it's better to not cut them, just loosen them off and remove them, just in case you break a string during your um, when you're restringing and you're desperate and you have to put a string back on. But just make sure you have some loose tension there. Um, if you're just going to do a restring, you're not going to clean the fretboard and stuff like that. Change one string at a time, okay? Leave all the other ones in tension and change one string at a time, and um, and that will help keep your um, your action and stuff and the setup on your guitar um, a little bit better. But if you if you're going to remove them all and do a full clean, just loosen them all up. But if you're just going to change your string strings, nothing else. Leave them on and do one at a time. So I'm just going to try and remove this. And this is where these pliers come in handy. The string wrap I did last time must be pretty good. Number. All right. When you're pulling off the string, just be careful not to scratch the body. If you've got a really nice guitar, it's really easy to scratch it. Just put these aside, okay? I'm just going to put them in my bed over here. That's one string out. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Just loosen it off and then cut it or try and remove it by hand. Um, and what I'll do is I'll I'll do one more string and then I'll cut it. Well, I'll cut the video and then I'll just get them all done and we'll cut to something else, okay? Because I want to keep the length of the video down. Alright, so the strings are off, and now I'm just going to show you how I clean the guitar real quick. Alright, so just get some lemon oil. Um, it's a good idea to protect your electronics when you're spraying anything around. I'm just going to drape these over like that. Plenty of protection. And then just the light spray, okay? On the fretboard, we'll get rid of the tuner. Okay, and then you let that sit. So, I mean, they say for, what is it, like half an hour or something. Uh, don't have the instructions anymore. Leave it on there for half an hour or so to let it sink in. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, but what you can do is you can spray this first and then go and clean everything else up. Clean up the back, clean the neck of the guitar. It may look clean, but if you're rubbing your hand up and down playing the guitar with your greasy, greasy, dirty hands, there's going to be a whole bunch of built-up crap on it. So you want to clean the back, polish it up. So there's crap all over this. And because it's under the strings, it's like a really difficult spot to get into. So if you take all the strings off at once, it's an opportunity to get into those, those bits that you wouldn't necessarily, um, well, normally be able to get to. You know, strings are in the way, it's difficult to clean. And you can see on the close-up of this, the headstock already looks a million times better, okay? A million times better. Okay? And what we'll do is we'll set up the, um, the tuners for our restring. And what you do is, there's little holes in the pegs. And what you want to do is you want to prep them so they're perpendicular, which means that's... That's parallel and that perpendicular. So the string, the strings, the post holes are like this, and you want them like that, straight across. And that's important when you get to the string winding part. 
So I'm just going to line these up. Guitar, um, and it's just there's slight differences in each one. Okay, this guitar is pretty damn beaten up, so I'm not going to go all out and um, give it a full polish. I'm just going to get rid of all the trouble areas, so around where the bridge is, where you rest your hand when you're palm muting. Under here, where you can't get to when the strings are on. And around the volume knobs. So you've got a close up here, and you can see there's a lot of moisture on these fretboards. And I'm using paper towel to get rid of most of the gunk. You'll find that you'll get a lot of build up of crud where the frets are, where the fret meets the wood, that little lip is. Polish our fret, so there's our little thing. Don't even know what it's called. And then we're going to get some of this wool. Okay. Make sure you're not rubbing on the, the fretboard, okay? Now we're not going for showroom quality here, we're just giving a quick buff. Alright, so I'm going to clean the back of the guitar. Same thing, lemon oil. Light spray, you don't want to get too much on there because you're just going to make it all greasy. The lemon oil is quite greasy. Now you give it a quick rub down. Pay a lot of attention to the neck. Okay, so it's clean. Oh, some gunk in there, I might just... Oh. Don't know what gauge string you use um, or your guitar shop uses. Hang on to the packet and um, that way next time you need the restring you can just walk up and say I'd like another packet of these please. Um, I buy these sort of three at a time because you never know when you're going to need to restring. Well you kind of do every few months or so but you might not have time to go down to the shop so these are the strings here. And what I would do, leave them in order, okay? Don't spread them out. Just leave them in a pile and pull them out one at a time. Okay? And what you do is you fit, if you've got a tunematic bridge like this, all you do is you feed it through. Okay? And then you lay it down. Um, now, I'm going to show you how to do a string wrap, um, which is how you lock the string down so it stays in tune and doesn't slip. Um, if you've got locking tuners, they're fantastic. I have Spurzel locking tuners on the snake bite, and they are amazing. You literally just feed the string through the hole, lock it off, and then you tune it up straight away. You don't have to do any string wrap. Um, but once you get pretty good at doing string wraps, it doesn't take long at all, but the locking tuners do make a big difference. You do need a little. You do need some slack when you're tuning. There's a couple of things that you can do. You can um, you can either pull it taut, and then you can measure past the tuning pegs. Say, you know, two tuning pegs in front, okay, and then that's the length, and you put an angle in that, okay. Um, the other method is go to the twelfth fret, and you put depending on how many fing how fat your fingers are. Put it underneath like that, and then that's how much slack you want. So wherever your tuning peg is, then you put an angle in. I'm just going to bend that by hand rather than use the pliers. Okay, and then what you do for your string wrap you go right 
around like that, around the tuning peg like that, pull it taut, okay, and then back over on itself. Keep it tight. Always have one finger holding your strings. And then get some tension. going to tune that right up. Uh, that was a pretty crummy string wrap but that's all you need. You just do that little wrap and you just want a couple of winds around the post. You don't want much more than that um, and now that's got some tension on it I'll just move on to the next string. Same thing. String on there. Get some slack. Bend the post, bend the string, feed it through. Back, under, try not to catch yourself on the other strings. Back. Pull it tight, and then over the string again. Hold it tight. You've got to be a bit of an octopus to, to do this, but with some practice, Just, just put some tension in it. Don't tune it up or anything. But as you can see on this, okay, that's all the wraps that I have. I'll do one more, one last time. And you'll find that your wraps on the um, first few strings are really crap and then the rest of them are really good. But it's just practice. Put a little right angle in, just like that. Feed it through the string, and the little angle just helps it bend in there like that, okay? Back around. Over. Sorry if my finger's in the way. Tight. Tight. Okay? So, I've put all the strings on and I just put some light tension on them, nowhere near in tune. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my floor tuner here and then my headstock tuner over here to tune up the strings. So I'm just going to do them one at a time, make sure that the volume is on, okay? And just tune up. So you'll be watching that change. And I'm going for half a step down. So we want D sharp. Or E flat. And this is usually A, so it's going to be G sharp. Or A flat, whichever way you want to call it.
Okay, so they're pretty close. So you can see that this tuner goes green once I hit the right, the right note. This is... Okay, now you would think that would be it, but you need to take a couple of passes at it. So you need to tune them all up. And then you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do some string stretching. And all you do is you get the string and with some just light, firm pressure, don't go nuts, go along and just stretch the strings. This is how touring bands who have their strings changed every single show and then even more than once a show, say you've got a guitarist that only has a couple of guitars and um, they've got like a two hour show or something, they might even get this one guitar restrung halfway through the show. And you've got to stretch, otherwise they won't stay in tune at all. They just won't and you'll be constantly tuning them. This happens naturally from playing, um, but if you want to be able to play it straight away, be particularly careful with the the high strings, the little thin ones, because they will break if you pull them too hard. Okay, so let's just check the tuning after I've stretched that. See how that's now really out? And you just tighten it back up. But what I would do is stretch it maybe once or twice, just be careful, tune it up and then play it. Um, they're probably gonna fall out of tune um, a few times in the first couple of days, but they'll settle in um, and then they'll hold tune really great. If you let your strings rot and you don't take care of them, they won't hold tune. They'll sound really dull and flat um, and just changing your strings as often as you can and just take some care and do it properly. Hopefully this video has been some use to some people. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's some techs out there to go, oh no, don't do that, don't do this, and, oh, that's terrible, why are you teaching them how to do that? This is just how I do it, and hopefully this video um, is of interest to some people. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna tune this bad boy up, and I'm gonna play it for a bit, because I was getting really sore fingers from rubbing my hands on the, um, the rusty old strings, so string change, and now it's gonna be a real pleasure to play, okay? Almost forgot. You gotta trim these off. That's where these come in. Okay, once you don't cut them off until the end, okay, because say your string rack comes loose and it whips off and then you don't have the spare string and you've already cut it, it's gonna be really hard. So just bring it up. Okay, done. And then you just repeat that on all the other strings. Okay, as simple as that, if you got really shitty flies like me, it'll be a bit difficult. Oh, it's sharper down the end, so I'll do that. Easy done. Please just cut them off. I'm gonna hate more than the look of strings hanging off, okay? Just be careful, they are sharp, so don't just go and rub them in with them. Okay, that's the last thing, guys. Just thought I'd throw that in real quick.